Okie dokie. Alright, I think I am ready to get started. This is ultimately, ladies and gentlemen that are tuning in today, a test of the live stream. As you can see, I'm trying to get all the cool stuff in place. I got the overlays. I got some coming soon stuff. I'm trying to mix my microphone with the music live. This is all a test, and I'm only going to be building for about an hour and a half, and then I'll come back on a little bit later today and hopefully uh, complete this build. Now, hey, hello, Lego Reviews, mate. I hope you're doing well. Okie dokie. Now, this starts out, this whole build, the Space Shuttle Metal Earth Premium Series build here is a, kind of a unique one. What we're going to be doing is kind of adding the original Space Shuttle that we built before pretty much onto these uh, little boosters here on the back, as well as having a really cool platform. For the most part, the first couple of steps look exactly the same as we've dealt with before. Um, but when we get over here, we're going to be making some, you know, big, big cylinders. Now, the way that we're going to be doing that cylinders and the way that I'm going to be forming them here is with my dapping set. But there are multiple ways that we can uh, get those done. And we're going to go over that hopefully a little bit later today as well. Now, okay, let me see here. I'm um, sorry about that. And uh, I'm also trying to look at this chat here. I'm going to figure out the situation of that and uh, look at everything at the same time. Just finished a test. Well, this is pretty much my test, man. <laughs> this is pretty much my test. Um, okay, let's get started. Um, actually, before we get started, I want to talk about the Bender 1.0 tool. First of all, thank you guys so much for supporting me with this. Uh, this is still one of my prototypes that I'm using on stream. It doesn't have a logo on the bottom. Kind of dirty, too. Jeez. Anyway, um, with this particular tool, you might notice now there's a little hole here. And uh, you might notice the top is a little bit under extruded. That's because this was a test bolt. I've actually improved these. I've only had one complaint so far about the bolt uh, breaking, and that's because the bolt is under tension. Now, if we look closely here, you can see um, this is actually where the tension kind of comes up on everything, and um, I, I knew that there might be a problem with that, so I was trying to pay as close attention to it as possible, and I was, that's why I said if you guys suffer any issues with these, please just let me know. Um, I will gladly send you new parts, no issue. Um, but what I did was I actually found a YouTube video uh, talking about how to make your parts stronger. And what they what they advised was to, and I, I forget the name of the gentleman's channel, and uh, maybe I'll put in the description a little bit later. But uh, he said that if you put a hole through the center here, it will actually make it stronger. And that's because what it does is it creates a wall on the inside of the screw, and it's not just infill. So I found that this was a great solution. And so far, with all the stress testing I've been doing with this one, um, I haven't had any issues whatsoever, and I've been really cranking her down. So um, I'm going to start using these ones now um, in all the future uh, all the future purchases. So if you purchase a Bender 1.0 tool, uh, you will get this new screw. If your screw breaks and you have purchased a Bender 1.0 tool, it, just send me an email. Uh, send me an email, or you can even just send me a little Instagram message, and I will get you a new one, no cost to you. Uh, these are my little babies, right? Like I'm, I'm really trying to uh, take care of these. And I will be honest with you too, the reason why I haven't, uh, I, oh, no, oh, well, hey man, have, have a good one. Cheers. I wish you a good day. Um, so the issue with these is, um, or the issue that I want to try to uh, solve is that I want to talk more about how to use these. And I'm going to do that throughout different live streams. The main reason why I haven't done a whole lot of uh, promotion on these though, is one, I want to make sure that they are actually good. I want to make sure that people are enjoying them. I want to hear the feedback, but two, um, I got to be able to make these in a, in a quantity that if I do any kind of advertising, uh, that I can actually meet that expectation. And I've been having so many problems with Matilda and uh, that's my 3D printer um, lately that it's been really hard just to get some basic stuff out and try to keep up with the orders that are coming through with just the one video that I've made. And again, thank you all so much for that support. It's really cool to have something like this I made myself and, uh, and you guys and enjoy it. Okay, let's finally get to this build already. Uh, shut your mouth uh, there, disorderly cone. Let's get going. Now, the first thing we're going to be doing here is bending our nose with part number one. Now, I think uh, I have some instructions there on the side of the screen. In the future, I might make those a little bit bigger. Um, again, this is just a test stream to see how everything comes out. Right, right now, I'm not even sure if my microphone is uh, 
is loud enough for you guys to hear. I'm going to listen back to the stream a little bit later and try my best here. Now what I'm doing is I'm actually curving this nose using my dapping set and I'm rolling this tool just like this. Uh, the reason why I'm doing that is because there's a little bit of a detail if you've noticed on the front and uh, by giving this little bit of a 3D look by doing that with the tool here by giving this a little bit of detail definition um, it really does make the model pop. It helps cr uh, break up those really flat lines you typically get when you take a piece out of uh, out of the sheet. Yeah, also too, as you guys can see, I'm used to recording things over and over again. So this will be fun uh, watching me stumble over my words. Okay. Now that's a massive gap there. Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna bring this around like that. And my plan is to try, so now you can see these two big little gaps here and you're like, oh man, disorderly cone, what you gonna do, what you gonna do? Well, if we uh, kind of just kind of push this down just a little bit, like I said, we'll get that really cool 3D look and we don't wanna press too hard. This metal is really easy to work with. Like this is the great thing about Metal Earth Metal. This stuff is, um, you know, it's almost like paper in the sense that you can get it to do what you want it to do. You just have to have the right amount of force. Just taking a quick gander at the chat there. Okay. This looks pretty good. Going right to the edge there, and I'm gonna take that tap and we're gonna bend her down. Just like that. Same thing on the other side. Grab as much of the tab in your tweezers as possible, and then we're gonna flatten her down, just like that. Cool. Now, I still want more of a detail here, but for right now, and we still got some gappage going on, which again, that's gonna be because we don't have that right there. Totally pointed the way I want. Do, 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 use my fingers. See, again, we can slowly work that out. The key thing though, is just not to warp the piece. Um, I know it's a, it's majorly a feel thing. And I know that with any hobby, there's a little bit of something you have to work with to get that feel down. Um, metal Earth Metal though, is really some of the better metal to get that feel down with. It's really consistent. Not dissing any other companies out there at all, just, uh, I'm just saying, like, that's why these guys are some of the best in the industry. Uh, let's go over to our next part, which is forming our, oopsie, uh, which is forming this little guy right here. Now, the interesting piece about this is that we have to kind of create this little area here. We want a rounded look, but we also want some straight edges. So what we're going to do, or what I'm going to do, is I'm going to start big and work my way down. I'm going to use this guy right here. And I am shaking, and that's because I've had so many coffees this morning. My goodness. And the espresso machine has been working overtime, stressing out, trying to get this live stuff done. There we go. Just a nice little roll, and that's all I'm doing is just trying to roll this over. Excuse the hair there. You know, I have Leica. And she's a great American Bulldog. I love her to death. But the girl is, like any other dog, loves to shed everywhere. That and uh, a Mr. Boba that uh, tends to make his way into my videos these days, too. Okay. There we go. Now... Um, I'm going to be honest with you. Now, if you see right here, I kind of got that really hard line, and I was trying to avoid that. Um, now, that we could have avoided that by me rolling the piece a little bit harder using more um, using more force. I would have been able to avoid that. But because we have these edges, you just really want to avoid um, getting a really hard crease, especially right here, because see, that right there is supposed to be rounded. So now there's a little tiny crease in there. Uh, it's not like overly prominent, so what we can do is we can kind of work it out a little bit with our tweezers. Just like that. And that's okay. It's not horrible, but it's just something to note. Like you really just gotta be careful when rolling this so you don't um, you don't go too hard. No, let me see here. Going too hard. All right. Now I'm gonna do this. And I'm just gonna roll this piece with my tweezers. The trick with this is using actually micro bends. Um, and I say that a lot in my videos, but really what you wanna do 
is you want to grab a little bits of the metal at a time and you want to suggest it. You're only suggesting it. You're not actually putting a whole lot of pressure on the uh, on the tweezers when you're doing this. And the reason why is because if you do it too much pressure, you're going to actually take the paint right off. What we're going to be doing is again, kind of going for that feel. We're just kind of suggesting the metal and we're, we're not sliding the tweezers down as we do it. Uh, we're just suggesting the metal to go here. Hey, you know, you just wanna you wanna get tucked away in that little corner down there, right? You just you just wanna do that for me? See? You look, you just suggest it. You know, maybe make some cookies and, and some milk. Maybe suggest it up a little bit and say, hey buddy, there we go. And uh, now this side here, we're gonna work the same way. Milk and cookies, milk and cookies, maybe some pasta. This is an American ship, so maybe we need to offer some more Americanized foods. I was gonna say guacamole, but you know, that's not necessarily American. <laughs> Alrighty, cool, there we go. So we got that now kind of shapeaged a little bit. We weren't really supposed to uh, bend this just yet. And yes, we are supposed to add some detail on. Uh, we're gonna do that right now though. Uh, where are these little pieces? Right back here. So what I'm gonna do is get right underneath this little tab and then I'm going to bend this up like so. Now the key with these ones is to get right down to the edge. You want to grab as much of the tab in your tweezers as possible. And the reason for that is if we don't grab enough of the tab, you won't be able to secure the piece as securely. Um, also too, um, you really do want to grab as much of the tab as possible because if you don't, um, it's not very uniform. And if you have one tab that has more of metal on the one side than the other, then the piece might actually be completely, um, what's the word I'm looking for? off center. That sentence almost got away from me there. There we go. Do do do. I've been having the Blues Clues uh, stuff stuck in my head lately. My kids don't watch Blues Clues anymore. They haven't done that in quite a bit of time. But um, yeah, for some reason, got that uh, Blues Clues little jingle stuck in my head. There we go. Man, I am shaking, shaking, shaking. Look at that, like that's that's like, whoa, I'm shaking away. You know what that means? That means we need more coffee. Excellent, 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 excellent. That's some uh, really good Mexico coffee there from Nespresso. Not sponsored, but would love to be. <laughs> would really help out the coffee budget. Wow, man, maybe I should really cool it on the coffee. <laughs> Could also be nerves. Doing things live is a little different than uh, pre-recording them, a little bit more comfortable. Uh, hope you guys are liking the music. I'm trying to figure out a way to, uh, with, with streaming on YouTube, obviously there's a lot more copyrighted issues that you would typically run into. Now, if you guys look, we actually have uh, completed this part. We've actually added uh, both part three and four onto this, and we've secured them with uh, some nice little uh, little flush bends. So what we're going to do now is go on to step three. Get ready for this. Ready? Check this out. Check this out. Ready? Boom. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, see? I got it like this thing, and like the, the instructions changed. I thought it was pretty cool. Anyway, um, what's not cool is that now you guys get to hear me change the instruction pages. And I still use that 3D printed stand that I did uh, so while a long time ago. That is still available if you guys are interested in uh, checking that out. If you have a 3D printer at home and just need some instruction stand, um, you can do that. I was thinking about selling them on my website, but I always get a little bit weird when it comes to selling things. I'm a store, yes. Um, but uh, I'm also just a creator. I like to build things. There we go. Cool. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now we're going to attach this little front here. Okay, this can be a little bit tricky and the reason for that is because we're actually combining multiple uh, tabs into their insertion holes at the same time. Um, we do have a rounded front. I'm gonna just kinda try to push that out just a little bit. And Let's see how easily we can get these things to go into their places. Uh, 
Hmm. This actually needs to be bent a whole lot more. I thought it would be too. It's been a bit since I built the other space shuttles, and I, you know, a good uh, researcher would have said to himself, hey, we should pull that out and take a quick little gander at that before we attempt this. But where's the fun in that? Cool. Okay, cool. Now that that fits, what we're going to do now is just take this tabaroni and we're going to bend her. Whoops. Jeez Louise. Oh my god, they were roommates. There we go. Okay. Cool. Now we can do this. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, okay, question though. What, uh, what tab area? Okay, no, that's correct. It goes into the side just like that. Now, I could just secure the one side and then work on the other one and then push everything into place. That might be best. You know what though? Let's see what we can, uh, let's see if we can get these two upper ones here on the windshields attached first on both sides and that way we know we're evenly bending the space shuttle. Nothing's worse than putting the nose on and seeing it like all kind of like warped. Cool. I'm going to use my little tab bending tool here. If you know anybody, if anyone out there in the uh, Groove Builder universe operates a lathe and you want to be my friend, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, if you want to help me out though, if you want a lathe and you want to give me a hand, let me know. I am trying to find a friend in need, or a friend indeed here, if you will, that can give me a hand with a lathe. I don't know how to operate a lathe. And to be totally frank, um, between working construction full time, trying to do the YouTube channel, and being a dad, it is really hard to, to manage everything. So what I'm trying to do is I would like to get some tools made. And I have some ideas. Um, and uh, yeah, so if you have any idea, if you have a lathe experience and you're looking for some projects, especially if you're a student, like if you're a student and uh, you, you say you just like, you know, completed something and you want a, a project to try on your lathe or something, um, just to test, um, you know, we let me know. Um, I can definitely give you some plans and then you can see if it works for you. And um, if you want to try those out, you can try them out. And, you know, I'm not going to give you a hard time if they don't work out. Because uh, again, it's all about learning. And I would I'd rather a student... Um, try to take on a project and learn something out of it, get something out of it, than somebody who's heavily experienced with it. I do appreciate experience though. Like I'm, I'm not gonna shy away from people that are experienced that wanna try it. Um, it's just, you know, this show is all about creating together. So if somebody's new out there that wants to give us a go, I would rather support somebody brand new than uh, maybe somebody that already has a lot of following or anything like that. Cool. Trying to get as much as I can into those. Okay, so what I'm having right now is a little bit of a hard time getting those, uh, tabs on the inside uh, secured and that's because we are not straight enough on either side so I'm going to see if I can manipulate the tabarunes oh I know um, Lego reviews you backed out bud um, but I got something for you man um, something I think you might find interesting uh, a couple of while ago you guys asked me or I asked you guys uh, you know what other things you want to see on the channel and a lot of you know that I love plastic brick models, uh, like, you know, Lego and stuff like that. So one thing I haven't done here on the channel is actually build any Lego at all. 
Uh, the reason why I haven't done that is because I feel like, you know, a lot of people have built LEGO on different channels, and I try to find things that are a little bit different um, to show off, just because I, th I think that's kind of a unique thing. I like, I like having unique projects and stuff. Um, anyway, so this uh, little past Valentine's Day, my beautiful girlfriend decided to get me a really cool Boba Fett helmet uh, Lego set. And it's just sitting here underneath the workbench, just waiting to go. But uh, I will build that. I will be building that on the channel, Lego Reviews. So there you go, buddy. I'm excited to give that a go and take a look at it. I haven't really built a Lego set in a little bit, but with all these really neat adult Lego sets that have been coming out lately from Lego, um, there, there's definitely someone I want to check out. There's some people on Instagram that I follow, and uh, they've built some really neat like, you know, some of the new kits, like the shoes and the typewriter, which I think is really cool. The typewriter is definitely a neat little piece. Man, that, uh, that tab is being a tricky. It's because I don't have this bent properly. See, a lot of people think that when these things don't work out, it's because the metal was designed wrong or whatever. No, 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 no. You got to understand that it's just a matter of, sometimes it can be the model. Like, don't get me wrong. Sometimes it can definitely be the model. But most of the time, it's just a way that we're bending this that we have to worry about. Okay. Let's be a little bit more aggressive with the way that we're handling this part. This is taking too long. Hmm. Both sides have popped out. So, it's time for us to get a little, uh, a little forceful. Let me just rearrange myself here. All righty. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking you don't want to go into that hole. But I'm telling you, Mr. Tab Rooney, you are going into that said hole. And I'm going to make you do it by forcing the crap out of you into the hole. What is the deal, though? Is it because the tab is bent? Because in theory, this should be really easy. This is an insert. Yeah, it's curled. Hmm. Okay. So what we'll do is we will fix that. Okay. There's that, that, and we're just pushing on the outside here now, pushing on the nose. I want this to be right, there we go. Okay, it looks like in the future, I would recommend actually attaching the two side pieces here first and then attaching the nose piece, just because it seems like that would be a lot easier with what I'm dealing with now. So, don't be like me. Okay. There we go. Now, I don't want to push too much on the one side, but I'm going to have to push a little bit. You know, this is one of those situations where you really wish you had that third hand. I remember working uh, back in the day, this is like a long time ago too, I was working with some uh, gentleman who did some product displays, and he used to say that all the time. He would be like putting together a, uh, you know, an Xbox 360 product display or something. And he would be like, oh, you know, it's, it's always really super easy until you get to that one part where that third hand would become real in handy. And uh, yeah, every time, just screaming in the middle of the uh, Future Shop. So funny. For those who don't know what Future Shop is, that's a Best Buy. It's the Canadian version. Uh, well, it was a Canadian version. It was bought out a long time ago. They were commission-based as opposed to uh, being just like, you know, minimum wage workers, which made the area very interesting to go to because you had a lot of knowledgeable people and people made their careers selling tech at the time. Like there was one gentleman that I was there with who would sell TVs, like flat screen TVs and home entertainment systems. And he was a, this guy, like he could sell, he could sell. And there was, he was uh, very good at, he was very good at it. Um, 
just I could see that guy's probably I bet you if I looked him up he's probably a realtor now he was just very good at what he did very good at being personable he would go and do golf golfing with people like think about that he sells TVs and he's golfing with people to sell TVs that's how dedicated this guy was anyway cool all right that looks pretty good I think um, you can still see that we have a little bit of an issue right here and that's because I took my tweezers and was trying to co like while I was trying to push that area in there and got a little bit of a dent there I'm not super happy about that but you know it actually doesn't look too bad I'll try to round that on either side at the same time the reason why I'm doing this now is because later when we start adding things into this it's gonna be near impossible to fix any of it so we do it now we're good to go now that we have that finished though we can move on to our next piece which is just taking the tabs on either side of these nameplates um, I'm going to be using the Endeavor what's really cool is that each one of the names of the shuttles are actually available in this kit. Uh, you get to choose which ones you want to put on. So in theory, you could actually buy this model several times over and uh, be able to um, collect all of them, which I think is kind of cool. So this is a nameplate that goes across the area that we just did. Um, I guess if it's, you know if this is not 100% lined up, it actually kind of looks a little silly. So keep that in mind if you're if you're doing this, uh, you really want that area to be almost flush. That is so weird. It's interesting too, I guess, because they wanted you to have the choice of like placing the name of what uh, what shuttle you wanted on here. Like I'm using the Endeavor, like I said, um, but it would have been maybe a little bit better to just do the print and offer multiple versions of it just because these little nameplates are a little weird. But again, like why make multiple models when you can just make one and then include nameplates? There's value in both. There we go. Okay. Again here, I'm just kind of pushing it in and then I'm gonna secure that little bit there. Again though, like because we are kind of flirting with the whole uh, harsh bends here, we have to be kind of careful like I don't want any, uh, I would rather these be rounded and I don't want any edges. Is that bent well enough there? I don't think so. Let me go back and just. See, it's a little different when it's live, isn't it? So you guys get to see uh, how I contemplate things. Normally I would just cut to like, and hey, look, there we go. We're all complete. Um, but now you get to see a little bit of my struggles. I am by far not the best builder on the planet. Um, my whole thing is if I can do it, you can too. So, <laughs> and that's like with everything. I really want to do more uh, painting and things. I got a really cool airbrush system. And ever since I did the Squirtle video, I, I really wanted to do more. Um, but at the same time, like I, I gotta, I'm trying to uh, keep the metal stuff going too. There's not too many YouTubers online that actually do uh, metal earth models or any kind of our 3D metal model hobby. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that come in and, and do it for a little bit, and then they they go out. And, and the reason for that is because these models take a long time. Um, in comparison to like other content, if you're trying to be a creator and you're trying to do YouTube or you know Instagram, TikTok, whatever, um, your content and how long it takes you to do um, really kind of drives your life. Um, so what I mean by that is like these metal models. Okay, so if you think about it, like this metal model here, I've been streaming now for um, you know a couple of moments. I would say I can't really see the timer at the moment, but I would say close to an hour, maybe 45 minutes, and uh, we've only gone through the first couple of steps. So if you think about it that way, most people in this time period would have gone through a couple of games or would have gone through a couple of matches. Um, you know, there, there's, there's explosive content, entertaining content. That's a, it's a lot more public drive. Um, those things are a lot more marketable and easier to do 
than something like this, which is very niche, very small. There are not many people coming on here to hang out with me and, uh, and hang out and watch these videos unless they're building the puzzles themselves. So when people start building these models, they think that, you know, it's going to be something that uh, people are going to tune into, like these, some of these other guys um, that do a really good job with puzzle models, or sorry, with puzzles. And um, there, is some, there is some definitely uh, some interesting connections between the two hobbies. And I think, and that's something I've been kind of like trying to like work on, is trying to figure out how I can combine some of those other YouTube styles um, like with the people that do the puzzles and the other model makers, like what they do successfully and try to like convert that into, into my show a little bit. And, um, but again, with three metal models being such a niche community, so small community, it's kind of really hard to grow. I mean, we look at the animated orange, I mean, he's been around for a long time. Uh, the amount of people that are on his channel is, is ways you've accumulated. I've been on here for five years. I've managed to get 3000. I love you guys so much for that, by the way. Um, but that's the reality of the size of our of our community. It's not huge. Um, so when people come in and start building these models, what I'm trying to say is when people come in and start building these models and start thinking that they're going to start a YouTube channel on it, I don't think they realize uh, the the amount of traffic that they're um, they're not going to receive right away. And even myself, I mean, like I've been doing this for a bit, my traffic varies um, heavily based upon what uh, what build I'm doing. So I'm not trying to discourage anybody out there from getting, becoming a 3D metal model or uh, influencer or YouTuber, Instagrammer, TikToker, whatever. Not at all. I'm just trying to give you a realistic expectation of when you enter the sphere, what it's going to be. Um, because if anything, I want more people in on this. I want more influencers. I want people to totally embrace this hobby and make it something really cool. Because again, the more people that buy these models, the more incentive that these metal model companies have to make some even cooler stuff. I mean, Look at Metal Earth. Look over the couple of things that they've been doing uh, over the last couple of years. If everyone remembers, like it wasn't long that long ago when all of these models that we were building were just made out of stainless, uh, like we're, we're not stainless steel, but we're just silver models. And there was nothing wrong with that. Uh, and some Metal Earth purists out there actually prefer those. And I, I, I feel you. I understand what you're saying. Um, but these color models have really elevated the hobby in, uh, in, in a lot of ways. And... Um, Again, it's all about exposure. It's about getting these things to people and getting people to, to check them out and try them. One thing I learned uh, when I was out doing my little stand that one day, uh, when our, I, I did a little store, my first uh, in-person store. One thing I learned is a lot of people in my area, especially in the Toronto area, really don't know much about our hobby. They, they've never seen it before. And uh, what was kind of cool is when I was there, people were coming up from like across the across the place to come take a look at my little my little table and the reason why that was is because of all the the cool models I had on there like there was so many there was so many of the things I brought like I had the Mandalorians on there I had a space shuttle there's actually a picture on Instagram showing it and uh, what was so cool is that people would come over and they're all complimenting the models that I was there uh, that I had built and uh, that was very cool um, you know like at, we've all shown our models before to people you know, and we all get that little like, you know, warm, fuzzy feeling when we show them off. Like when people say, oh, man, that's so cool. And you're like, it's a thing of pride, right? OK, well, imagine that. But like a thousand people, <laughs> two thousand people, like it, not, not not really. It was it was less than that. But still, the point is, is that there were so many people and so many people making comments. It was a I was writing warm, fuzzy feelings all day. It was it was so cool. Um, but uh what, but what the thing that I found is that no one, no one really knew the hobby, and, and a lot of people were intimidated by the uh, by the models themselves. They're like, oh well, you know that, that looks really complicated. And one of the major things I had to explain to them was that like, no, like yeah, it looks complicated, and that and that's the cool thing about it. But these things are actually pretty easy to do if you have the time, especially if you want to. Uh, if you've ever put together a bead, uh, a bead bracelet or anything like that, like you can pretty much do it. Now, um, getting back to the model, <laughs> we are now just looking at these boosters here. And what I've done is I've created a nice little circle using my dapping set. And I've also created a kind of a doming effect um, on the outside here. Now, you do want a little bit of a rounded edge on these. And I could have done a little bit of a better job. Mine are looking more, a little bit more like cones. And I don't think I have anything to um, kind of help me with that outside of like maybe kind of hollowing them out like this and scraping them out. But the point is, is you want a nice little circle on the bottom here because we're going to be putting these little borders on the bottom as well. One side should be black and one side should be silver, but it looks like both sides. Oh, that's just silver side. 
silver side gets connected to the bottom. And there's a Leica here again. Okay. Man, I'm having a hard time, aren't I? I think it's because of all the shaking from all the coffee, which I need to take another sip of before it gets too cold. My uh, my little dudes today, when they get off school, um, we've been playing Minecraft quite a bit lately, and I know that when I get when they get off, it's going to be a Minecraft request almost immediately. So, trying to prepare a little bit of that. There we go. That's our first booster. Now we're going to do the same thing with this guy here, inspect the bottom, find the silver part, and we're going to put the silver on the bottom. The reason why we want to do this is because we want everything to be uniform, and you know as well as I do that if you accidentally put one of these on backwards, it's going to drive you insane every time you look at that model. There was uh, a Titanic model that I did uh, a while ago. Not the one that I did on my YouTube channel, but the uh, the first one that I did. I put the stack on backwards, and I looked at that forever. I was like, man, I should take that apart and just fix it. But I left it, and when I redid the model here on the channel, I made sure I did it right. I don't know where all these, where all this stuff's coming from, guys. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I've been thinking about changing up my mat here, too. Let me know uh, what you guys think I should do uh, with that. Do you think I should go with just like a typical wooden background, uh, like maybe just plain wood? Um... Do you think maybe I should go with a white background? I thought about maybe putting some like uh, paper down or maybe painting a little surface that has a little bit of a rubber on it just to kind of hold all the pieces. I did experiment with some magnets, um, but I found like fridge magnets weren't strong enough to actually really justify doing anything. Um, you may have seen a video of me testing some of that and yeah, it didn't really work out too much, too well. Okay, so now that we got these three little boosters done and they look pretty decent, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go on to uh, part eight. Part eight has us bending these little guys. Now, uh, with part eight, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be bending all of the detail backwards. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take one pedal like this, and I'm going to just bend it a little bit. And then I'm going to take a second pedal, and I'm going to bend these guys until they meet. And then once they meet, I know that I've bent them far enough. And then all I'm going to do is go around the entire piece, and I'm matching the border every time. Now, um, if you get good at this, you can actually just like kind of peel it. It's like, you know, doing a little peel banana move rather than trying to like uh, jump all over the place. And that is what our piece is going to look like when it's complete. So what we're going to do then with this is attach this little guy like that. There we go. And... Go. There we go. Cool. There's our booster. That looks pretty good. Um, what we're going to do next, actually, though, is actually combine it to the next piece, but we're going to just put this down for right now. And we're going to move on and just add these ones on. Now, alternatively, if you don't feel comfortable um, adding the piece on afterwards, you could actually add the piece on first, like this. And this actually works for not just this, but multiple Metal Earth uh, instructions. I find sometimes it's easier to actually add the detail on first, then shape everything, than to uh, play the game and go a little crazy. Now, one thing to keep in mind with this is because we're dealing with pedals, the, uh, the tabs can very easily warp and be hard to place in their right place. So just be mindful of that. And you have to kind of move the pedals back into place and then do that whole jazz. There we go. There we go. And now, because we've uh, attached this piece, we can now bend this guy. And again, same method as before. We're just bending them until they match. There we go. All the way around. Just like that, all the way around. Very cool. Very, very cool. Now this guy here, same thing. Oh, hey, I'm sorry, buddy. I missed your message there. Still one of the best uh, beautiful models in Metal Earth. Easier to build than 
initially thought and lots of fun. I completely agree with you on this. Um, you know, honestly, I'm thank you for uh, your comment there, buddy. Um, I completely agree with you, uh, 100%. The space models are some of my favorite from Metal Earth. I, I, I like they do it right. Um, they do it really well, uh, especially with the details and stuff. Like, you know, there's a lot of space models out there, especially in the plastic and all that kind of stuff, and they kind of cheap out on things because they're just like, hey, look, uh, NASA space, yeah, yeah. These guys do a really good job with capturing details, like the. International Space Station, as much as it has a ton of detail, isn't really that bad. And the shuttles are easy. Well, easier, as I struggle to put these guys in their place. <laughs> Pull up a little bit, separate them. I'm actually... Uh, to be honest with you, I know you said it's an easier build to do, but I'm actually interested to see how these little uh, boosters on the other side here, later on down the road when we get to the uh, the big boosters, I really want to see how those come together. It might be really easy, um, you know, getting the cylinders, but I also want to show you guys how to use that bender tool to uh, help you with some of the cylinders. Because there was an idea behind it, and I'm actually also working on a new piece of cheese, um, which is the piece that goes on top of the bender tool. Um, and uh, I'm gonna send that out to some people to test for me. I'm also trying to work on some uh, feedback channels. There we go. Now, one thing I wanna mention right here is I'm pre-bending these tabs up and I haven't done that on the other two yet, but the reason why I'm doing that is because by bending these uh, just a little bit straight, that's gonna make it a lot easier for me to be able to insert it onto uh, part nine there let's do this there we go okay part nine part nine is pretty cool you can take this guy right here and because again we've bent them already it's pretty easy to attach them on now one thing i'm going to make sure though too is that each one of these boosters has a seam right that's that little seam on the bottom with the tab i don't want to see that on the top i don't so what i'm going to do is make sure that all those are facing down Consistency, Groovers, consistency. Yeah, I went ahead and cut out all the pieces for today's stream. I thought that was a good idea. That way you guys aren't watching me uh, snip all these little pieces out. There's actually not a whole lot here. I was expecting there to be a lot more, but the details for the most part are actually just really big. I do think it's interesting that they chose just to reuse the shuttle model and just put the shuttle model and combine it with boosters as opposed to making it just maybe a little bit bigger because that would have been kind of cool. If they made it like bigger than the typical shuttle model, that would have been kind of neat. There we go, booster number two. Okay, I'm not shaking as much anymore, which means I need more coffee. Let me just uh, see, we're kind of running low here, guys. Okay, yeah, it's turned into iced coffee. Woo! It's actually one thing that's kind of good about Nespresso. Um, I'm not I'm not trying to shield Nespresso here, guys, but <laughs> one thing I really like about them is that uh, I say I work construction, right? So um, today we uh, had some we were supposed to have some adverse weather, so all of the uh, clients actually canceled on us today. Um, but uh, like I say, I work construction, so um, I usually am up really early in the morning, and uh, sometimes I'm usually home kind of late uh, with what I do. And uh, one thing I've I've loved having over the years is uh, the Nespresso maker near or around my truck. And the reason for that is because, man, that stuff, like, I mean, you can go to the Tim Hortons, whatever, and you can go to McDonald's and you can you can buy a coffee, right? And uh, it's okay, but man, that Nespresso stuff, that's a kick in the pants. That stuff is like, you wanna have a good day? Like, you wanna have a, you wanna have a good day? You wanna start your day right? You want a good tasty coffee that you don't wanna spend a hundred dollars for at the Starbucks? You wanna get an espresso machine. 
My one and only ad. My one and only ad for Nespresso. Not sponsored. <laughs> Not sponsored. <laughs> I did make a video on them, right? So, I mean, like, yeah, I guess my love is somewhat known. There we go. Okay, our boosters are pretty good here. I still want to make sure that they're uh, not lopsided or anything. They look pretty straight, though. That looks pretty good. What do you guys think? Mm, Kidoki. I'm going to put that down. And uh, now we're on to step four. I kind of lost my little place there. Now, step four, uh, we're going to be rounding off these pieces right here on either side. If we look actually on the back of the part, you can see all these little mini lines. Uh, these little lines here actually represent where we're going to be kind of making that rounded shape. So again, the way that I like to do this is with my dapping set, um, but you can pretty much use anything to help you with this. Uh, if you have like a little marker at home, this is a little bit uh, smaller. So I would say a chopstick. A chopstick would be pretty cool. Excuse me. Um, I think that um, what I'm going to do here... Mm, you know, I could use my Bender 1.0 toad for this part to show you how to do a rounded piece. So, let me show you this. Um, let me show you a couple of things, actually, with this tool. I, I, I'm going to just take a second here and show you something cool about this tool. Uh, so, real quickly, you'll notice that this comes apart. First of all, like I said before in the beginning of the stream, this is the new bolt. This comes apart here. You're going to see this one kind of gouge a little bit, and that's because I was using the metal time and metal... Um, What's it called? Uh, time for machine models. And those guys have some really thick metal. Now, these are all uh, springs that are made by me. And, uh, oh, this is actually a test piece. And I can tell because there's still uh, some, some glue there. Anyway, uh, so you see these little, like, rounded edges here? So the whole point of that was to be able to take something like, say, like, a rounded piece. Like, uh, I don't know. I'm not going to. I don't really want to just YOLO one of these pieces right now. But basically... You could take a piece like this and then place it here and then use a tool and push it down. See, you push it down, you take the cheese wedge off, you push it down, it gives you a really nice rounded edge. Um, and then what you could do is you take that piece off and then you can uh, just take your tweezers and kind of round it off a little bit so you avoid that teardrop shape. I included some pretty, uh, pretty consistent ones that I've seen throughout models. Um, I've also included these smaller ones back here I try to keep in mind about like the cathedrals and things like some of the architectural builds and stuff. I try to keep that in mind. That's why that's there. And these other little cuts, you're saying, well, are those are those for squares? I mean, you could use them for that if you really wanted a straight 90 degree bend. Uh, but really what those are for is actually um, spaces for these pieces to be bent and shaped. Um, because what you'll find is like, see right here, um, that little bit right there would actually get in the way, not allowing you to form this piece. But because we have that cutaway there, we can, uh, we can get that to bend correctly. So, um, just an FYI, if you're taking your piece apart, if you're taking your Bender 1.0 tool apart, uh, just be careful of that spring. Um, I make all those myself. I sit here with a little, <laughs> with a drill and, and wrap them around. So, um... They're, they're, they are just raw steel. I want to be very clear. If you're taking this apart, please, 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 please be careful. Uh, we already deal with metal in our hobby quite often, so we, we're all pretty proficient about dealing with metal and know how to handle metal well. But still, it's a spring. There's metal. If you're taking it apart, you know, just be careful, guys, okay? I would hate for someone to get hurt with my tool. Now, um, let's go right here. Enough talking. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to suggest it, just like that. Just a little bit of a bend, see? And then I loosen it and bend a little bit more. Loosen it, uh, or sorry, tighten it. Tighten it down like this. Keep tightening. And then we loosen it again. And we keep tightening again. And all we're doing is we're slowly bending the, the part. Like that. Okay? And uh, as long as we're following the... Uh, as long as we're following that little pattern that we see on the metal, we should be okay. So I'm going to do that like that. Okay. And there we go. You see how we got that really nice rounded, see that really nice rounded edge? That's why I designed this tool. It's because you can get a really nice rounded edge and be consistent all the way through. Yes, you can do this with a pair of tweezers. Yes, you can do this with a pair of pliers. There's a ton of different ways to get this done. Uh, this way, it's just the most consistent. And I'm also thinking about people with arthritis. 
um, or people that have like really shaky hands um, or, or whatever different kind of medical conditions, this is a little bit bigger for you to handle. So when you're putting these things into place like this, say for instance, like, okay, again, uh, we can use that little cutaway right here. Oh, I made it slip. All right, line it up like that. There we go. Tighten her down. Um, this allows you to be able to control the part a little bit more. And, and because it's such a small piece, people with different, uh, again, people that are challenged with this uh, kind of handling these kind of small things, it gives you something, gives you more surface area to deal with. You can also use your tweezers um, along with this as well to try to help you. That That's the, the theory behind this. And I know I haven't made a video to show you exactly how to use this yet, and that's my fault. It's just, again, if, if I make too many videos on this, I'm really worried about how many of these I'll be able to make. And I, I don't want to be able to not make uh, sales. Um, I don't want to run out of these. That's why I gotta keep printing. Keep printing, keep printing, keep printing. Matilda needs to print more. Her stepper motor on the back, I think is shot because I keep running into, I think is heat. Um, I noticed the back stepper, uh, my, my 3D printer just randomly shuts off. And if it shuts off, you're like, oh, we'll just resume print, right? Well, that, yeah, I could do that. But the problem is, is that now I have a giant freaking uh, line throughout all the prints. And I'm trying to make something nice. And uh, like I said, these are my babies. So if it's not if it's not really my quality, then I don't want to give it out to you guys, right? There we go. Okay. Again, consistency. It's all about consistency. Okay. Now I can just kind of play like that. Now if I really want to, I can actually even do this side here too. So I'll stick it like right there. And I'll just like, again, you gotta kinda gotta do one of these. Like that. This again. Again, so you can take this out. And there we go. Nice little thing. I'm gonna just take this little guy here and we're rounding it out. Again, it's all about just kind of finessing it and I am not a perfect modeler, but I do my best. There we go. The other day I was on the Reddit um, and a couple of other Facebook groups and uh, I've been looking at you guys' creations I mean, some of you guys are extremely talented. I gotta say, like, the way you're able to uh, bend these models, like, man, some of you guys have, like, a really interesting, like, almost Japanese uh, sense of uh, patience about them. And the way that you complete them, it's uh, quite impressive. There was actually a gentleman today that I was online, and uh, I saw his post. I believe it was in the fans of Metal Earth. I, I could be wrong. Um, but he posted a really cool, actually, I think it was on Reddit. I think it was on Reddit might be wrong, but uh, I, I go to a lot of different places to look at Metal Earth builds and stuff every day. Um, but he made the um, Hogwarts Castle, and I think his name is AJ. I could be wrong on that. But anyway, he uh, he made a really awesome display. Like, guys, if you got to – I'm sure Metal Earth's going to share it, but when they do, man, this guy is talented, like super talented. He made a uh, landscape, and um, – it just, it looks so good. Like he did a great job with the lighting. Um, the whole landscape really fits the whole model. He did a great job and uh, I really can't uh, compliment him enough. And I, I feel bad that I didn't get his, I feel, I feel like I should go online and take a look at his name, but I'm using my iPhone right now to, uh, I'm using my iPhone right now to help me uh, record this video. So I, I don't actually have access to it. Did I install this incorrectly? I'm not sure. It looks right, but it also looks slightly off. I'm gonna leave it for right now, but there's another little slot right there, and the instructions, I actually can't see. Okay, I'm gonna do a no-no. I'm gonna do a no-no, forgive me, but I'm gonna actually pull the instructions over here for a second and take a gander. Um, I don't usually like to show the instructions on uh, on stream, especially because you guys see them on the right there. Um, yeah, okay, we put it in the right one. So if you look very closely right here, there's actually a little slot you can see right next to the arrow going through. Good job, Metal Earth, on that one. Uh, you know what would be kind of cool is if they would take like a spot like this where I'm see like right now I'm trying to figure out how this goes, right? 
if they would take like a box and like just maybe highlight the spot and then show another spot over here, another perspective of the same piece, that might be a little easier for us to understand how certain things are done in some cases. But how are you going to know um, where people are going to get confused, right? Like, because if I look at instructions and versus say the way that Lego reviews looks at instructions or, you know, maybe uh, Javier or any other guys that are out there, um, we all look at instructions differently. So how do you know when someone's going to get stuck? Stuck. I just think that you have to do your best and maybe listen to feedback. But Metal Alert does a great job of doing that too. They do a pretty good job of listening to feedback. Okay. This guy here. I want to make sure I'm doing this right. I think it goes like this, back like that. And then this goes, does it go down and up? It does. Okay, so what we're going to do is, I'm going to try to show you this on camera. What you do is you take this, you bend it all the way back like that, because we're creating a shelf. And then you'll notice there's a little line there. We're going to move our tweezers to that little line, and then we bend it up. And then what we've done is we've created like a little staircase. And I'm going to show you a side profile like that. Let me see if I can show you like that. See that little, see that little like staircase we made? That's what we did. That's all we're doing there. And um, now what we're going to do is I'm going to move my tools out of the way. And um, okay, this looks alike okay this bottom part here gets bent up yep i wear these uh gloves again for uh, the fact that i work in construction my hands get beat up i wear gloves all the time i wear gloves literally almost every single day and uh being that the majority of my majority of what you see on these streams is just my hands working i don't think you guys need to see my hands uh, getting all beaten up all the time especially because um when i'm typically recording these i record these over several days um sometimes my hands are more beat up than others okay so i'm having a bit of a hard time getting this guy in place let me see here <laughs> Tabernacle. There we go. A little bit of a push. There we go. Solid. All right. Now what I'm doing is just securing those tabs. go and I'm gonna push that in and there we go look at that see look uh, we have a little bit of a gap there let's just push that like that and boom that's perfect that is absolutely perfect I mean there's a little bit of love there I'll fix that right there so I guess it's not perfect it will be in a second but look at that it's almost like I knew what I was doing yeah all right we're good with that one um, well not really we have to add some more junk to it but we're gonna do a little cone Grab this guy right here. This is where I get to bring in some cool little gadgets. We're gonna use this one right here. Oh, this actually reminds me. So another thing that happened here this week that I thought was pretty cool in the Metal Mono world was a, another poster. And I'm gonna get her name wrong. I'm gonna get her name wrong. Um, I believe it was Lindsay. I might be wrong. But she uh, found these really awesome ear extenders. Now, I know what you're thinking. What? But hear me out. These ear extenders are like 17 bucks, okay? And they come with like, and again, I'm, I'm going to misquote this, but they come with like 30, um, 20 to 30 different pieces, okay? And each piece is a cone, and they're made out of like a plastic or like a metal. You can choose different different kinds of what you want, right? Um, but the thing is, these are perfect, 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 perfect tools for 3D metal models. Like, and I mean it, like I, you could use them for a dapping set like I use mine right now. You can use them for a doming set. Like they're, they're, they are so 
cool. And um, I'm definitely going to try to get myself a set and, and test them out and, and let you guys know if they're worth grabbing. But right now, just, just off the hat, I mean, there's so many different sizes of cones you can use. And uh, for people that are looking for inexpensive tools to be able to do these things, I mean, uh, especially because we don't have our guys over at 3D Metal Model Tools anymore, I think that this, this might be a really interesting alternative. And I'm always looking for tools that are you know, a little bit, uh, not your typical idea of what you would choose for metal models. Um, because I love that. I love the fact that you can use, who would have thought of that, right? Like ear extenders, like it's such an easy thing to think of. Um, now when you look at it, it's like, oh, well, no, no duh. I mean, right. But this shows you different, uh, different people come into the hobby. And when they come in, they bring some really cool experience, really neat experience. Shove that little guy in there. Okay, um, also too, so what I'm seeing right now on my OBS uh, streaming here is that there's supposed to be in that little square down there on the bottom right hand side, you're supposed to be seeing the, uh, the, the YouTube chat log going. Um, I thought I had it set it up correctly, but this is why we test things. And uh, I'm very gracious to everyone who's tuning in today. Um, I, I really am. I really thank you all for uh, popping in, saying hello. And for all the future people that are watching that are actually trying to build this themselves, welcome as well. Do me a favor, though. I am trying to grow. We want to get bigger. We want to extend the, the love of the 3D Metal Model community out to everybody here. Show them what kind of cool stuff we can do. Show them what kind of cool stuff they can build. And if you can press that like button, if you're new here, press that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. It really does help uh, spread the news about the channel and uh, really does help me on the analytics side of things. Cool. Awesome, awesome. Actually, I was kind of not really going to talk about it, but I'll talk about it a little bit. Um, so a lot of you guys know I posted that video about the uh, hashtag create Ukraine. And, uh, you know, I, I, I really uh, I really meant my best intentions by that video. I really did. I was not trying to shill my company anyway. I was not trying to take advantage of, uh, of the situation over in the Ukraine uh, as a way to sell things. Um, that is not, and, I, and it's really hard. Um, I realized that afterwards that it's really hard as a store uh, to kind of get behind anything because especially if you retail products, like it's really hard because it does come across as shilling to some people, no matter how, or how, no matter your intentions, it can come across as shilling. And, uh, you know, people, there's a lot of bad people out there, um, especially in the YouTube world. Like, it, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not dumb, right? Like I watch a lot of YouTube. I'm involved in the community. I'm not stupid. I know about the stupid people that exist out here, especially like the Ace family and things that uh, really manipulate their audiences, Jake Paul and all those guys that use NFTs and stuff to really put them down. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really aware of that, right? And I'm, I'm also aware of all the people on TikTok that are using the situation in Ukraine uh, to gain audiences and everything like that. That is really not the case for me. Um, I mean it that I say, like when I say that, like I have friends that are there and uh, I, I'm, I'm worried about them, and I'm worried about the uh, state of the uh, state of the hobby um, over there as well. Um, this hobby is linked heavily to the Ukraine, and we do have companies like Metal Earth, which is a very good company. And I don't want to uh, not not hold them up, but some of these other companies, uh, I think that people think they're a lot bigger than they really are, and uh, they don't realize that they're a lot they're a lot smaller. And uh, these companies do they they do need our help. Um, I know other companies and whatever, but we all love what we do here. We all love building models. And if Metal Earth was having a hard time, and I would do the same thing for them. And um, that's that's pretty much what I'm trying to say. It's not just about the companies. It's about the people behind the companies too. These guys are, um, you know, um, again, I want to be careful about how I talk about this. And that's because I've been doxxed. <laughs> not really doxxed, but I had a ton of copyrights uh, put on my channel in the last 48 hours. I've had copyright attacks. I have had my channel on Spotify. I've had to actually contact Metal Earth over this um, on Shopify. Um, all of my uh, all of my materials that I sell on there from Metal Earth, uh, they're being questioned for copyright now. Um, and that's all because of, of that video. I mean, within 24 hours, I was banned out of a Facebook group and 
Um, I was also, uh, you know, had tons of copyright stuff go up on my channel and things. And uh, it's just crazy to me how it, literally you post a video and, and you, you think you're doing something right and just the, the, the backlash. But again, like it, it just shows you, you can, you can post something out there with the best intentions and you can do whatever, but the judgment of how things, people are going to receive it, it can always, uh, it can always be different. But right now I'm just trying to work on the copyright stuff. So I've um, I put a couple of appeals in. Uh, with YouTube, it's a little harder because they went through some of my videos and they basically laid claim to like um, some of the Star Wars ones, which are pretty easy to, to do. Um, now, mind you guys, like I, I piggyback off of the Metal Earth license. So like when they, um, so for instance, because I'm a store, I that's kind of like how I'm getting away with doing some of the skits that I do. Um, you know, with, with YouTube and copyright law, it's a little bit weird, right? Because um, you kind of have to have a, um, permission to use a lot of the stuff you see. I went too hard on that one. And um, with music and or anything else, you have to have like permission. And so me being a store allows me to be able to piggyback off of the Metal Earth license that they have um, to sell my products. So I'm allowed to use, for instance, um, GB1, R2D2, in my videos because I'm essentially advertising to you um, every time I use that. Um, I'm using the Metal Earth, um, I'm, I'm advertising for Metal Earth every single time that I'm using that. That's how I get away with being able to use those trademarks. Um, so I know where I'm at and I know what I'm allowed to do, um, what I'm not allowed to do in, in that respect, but for all of those things to be triggered and um, I'm a little worried too because if I, um, depending on how this copyright system works, um, I may have to share my personal data to fight some of these. So yeah, it's just, it's a weird, it's really weird, man. It's really weird, especially because I just build models. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, I, I, I like this setup too. I think I might try to make it a little bit bigger in the future. Um, I think um, I want to have some moving backgrounds. Uh, maybe I might try to use some software and see if I can get the space, um, the, like stars or something moving in the background, or maybe get the, uh, make it look like the earth or something is flying. I think that'd be pretty cool, right? Sorry to get to, sorry to get kind of down on you guys on that one. It's just something that's been really weighing heavily on my head in the last like 48 hours. And uh, I, I just, I don't know, I'm a little bit uh, a little bit down about it, but it's okay. Things pass. It's a war, and uh, in wars there's casualties. Do this right here. We're going to insert this into the side. And just like before, we're just basically mimicking what we've done before. There we go. Okay. There we go. Push it down. Awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. Now I'm just going to try to like work this in a little bit better. I think it looks pretty good though. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed by so far how we've been able to pull some of this off. However, I am gonna have to end this stream soon. So I'm hoping to be able to get this other booster done and maybe try to get this tail on and we'll see how we go here. Um, but what I'm gonna do is come back on a little bit later. I know I said that in the last stream that I was gonna um, come back on and then the world happened. Um, again, I, the, what I work in is, is kind of like a emergency construction. So sometimes the things, uh, sometimes, I plan things and they just don't happen. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to avoid this like teardrop and all I'm doing here is just slightly bending that back. And then once I get the two edges to meet, I'm going to then kind of like work them together like this. Same thing like we've done with our pedals. I, I know it's kind of hard to see there, guys. I, I realize that. Same thing with like our pedals. We're just trying to meet the edges. And then, there we go. 
actually, you know what? I'm going to pull that back up. I'm going to take my tab bending tool and I'm going to use that instead to help me get a nice rounded shape, consistently rounded shape. I like being consistent um, when it comes to these models because I find that if you don't, if you're not consistent with the bends, if you're not really always trying to do exactly the same thing, over time, pieces will not fit into their places. It's like accumulation of errors, if you will. I think that's what my uh, one friend used to say, accumulation of errors. It starts out okay, but then after a while, things start to go a little wrong. And before you know it, you're putting the bumper on the left window. Grabbing these little tiny bits of metal here. Hmm, a large metal earth project. What's a large metal earth project? That's a good question. Um, in terms of metal earth, if you want one that's like you can appreciate, um, I haven't built it yet on my channel, but if you take a look around, you can definitely find it. Um, they have a, why am I forgetting the name of the structure? It's in Paris. Why Eiffel Tower. They have an Eiffel Tower and um, it's a mega Eiffel Tower. Huge. It's uh, like they have a premium series version. They have a normal version and then they have like the mega version. It's typically made for like stores to have as a display. And that one is super cool. It's huge. It's it's really huge. And I bet you if you take some lights, like even those little fairy lights, and you work it into that structure, it would look amazing, especially in like a nice collection. Like it'd be a really good centerpiece. Outside of that, excuse me. <coughs> Outside of that, what would be another really good big metal earth one? I hate to say this, but like really, like, you know, Metal Earth, um, they don't really have very many like massive models necessarily. Um, that's more like MU. That's like those guys. Those um, MU is really the king of like massive builds. They're the ones that do all the transformers and like the big houses, uh, like the, um, the Asia inspired houses and stuff. Um, they also have a lot of traditional Chinese buildings and things in there as well. Those ones tend to be a lot bigger. Um, if you're into that kind of aesthetic, that would be the, that would be another way to look at. But that metal is also a little bit different than Metal Earth. Okay. Now, typically I would actually like um, twist these tabs, but uh, I'm not going to right now. <laughs> We'll see if I regret that very shortly. Um, the reason why I would normally twist those tabs is because it would create a better connection. And I guarantee that now that I didn't do that, this is going to be a Mr. Wobbly piece, which if it is, that will be proof in the pudding that sometimes it's just easier to twist the tabs than it is to uh, bend them over. Aesthetically though, it can look better to uh, bend the tabs over, especially if they're exposed. Okay, there we go. I am uh, kind of rushing a little bit now just because I do want to uh, get something done here before I have to go. Okay. Excellent. Push that in there. And now this time, instead of uh, twisting it, we're gonna, oh, shoot a monkey. Okay, that booster is a little crooked, but not bad. Not bad, a little crooked, not bad. We can maybe work it out in post, we'll see. As long as you don't tell anybody, I won't tell anybody either. Am I gonna be upset about this though? Am I gonna be upset about this? You need to ask yourself this question now. Um, uh-oh, I did install it upside down. 
Ah, shoot a monkey. I'm going to go with it. Executive disorderly cone decision. <laughs> we're going with it. Um, all right. So now what we're going to do is actually put these into their places. Um, oh, I bent this the wrong way, actually. This little shelf is supposed to go the opposite way, like that. And uh, now what we're going to do is take this little guy right here. Uh, where is it? Okay, right there. What I'm doing is I'm going to insert the tab first and then... <laughs> okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the tab first and then I'm going to uh, put the whole... I'm gonna, okay, I'm going to put it in here first and then put it into this tab here. That's what I'm going for. That sentence definitely got away from me. Yes, I um, I actually really like the architectural builds too. I haven't done a whole lot of them um, in the recent years, uh, and that's just because of requests, but um, the architectural builds are actually some of my favorites in that Metal Earth has to offer. Um, again, like I love the space builds that they have. Their space builds are amazing. Um, they do a really good job, and I, I actually, something I need to do, I need to message Metal Earth and actually ask them about how they go through their creative process, and maybe I make a video about that. Maybe I can... Um, get Metal Earth to spill some industry secrets and show their creative process and maybe uh, we can interview some of the artists. That'd be kind of cool. Um, talk with them. Think about their process about how they come up with these builds. That might be kind of a cool idea. Again, it would be... Uh, you'll have to talk with Metal Earth and see if they would be uh, down for it. They're really good people, though. They, uh, they're really uh, approachable for the most part. I've been able to communicate with them pretty regularly through email and they, uh, they're always... Pretty happy to chat back. Great thing about the pandemic bringing... Oh, I should have said the P word. Great thing about the, the people not being as sick anymore. Um, not trying to get into politics. Uh, but the great thing about this, I've been able to find gloves again. <laughs> I have had such a hard time. Uh, we have a Home Depot and stuff, and these gloves are the, uh, these gloves, I've gone through Gorilla ones, Gorilla Grip ones, I've gone through some off-brand ones, but Amazon or any of the other companies don't actually retail the gloves that I want. Um, if you look at these gloves, they actually don't have any grips on them, and I, I like that because I find that if you put grips, they just look weird, and uh, they actually like trap dirt, and they will kind of have the opposite effect of what you're wanting. The whole reason why I'm wearing these gloves is yes, to uh, create a consistency on camera because again, I'm working in construction, but um, if you have like the little grips on here, the little bits of dirt get all over the silver and doesn't look good. It's been my experience. So I have to try to get ones that don't have any grip. Okay, boosters are complete for the most part. I think those look pretty good. Um, now what we're gonna do is add all of this together that we've done. That's this guy right here. If we've kind of bent this correctly, this should be a pretty easy part. Um, I am expecting to have a little bit of resistance here. So right there, for instance, right there, boom. Boom, that looks so good. I love it. Hey, Picasso. I like it. Or is it, hey, I like it, Picasso. Pushing these guys down. Yeah, I'm a little bit bummed out without seeing the chat there on the side of the screen. I'm gonna have to definitely try to figure out what uh, what went wrong there today. And then later tonight, hopefully I can have the chat up on the screen so we can all keep seeing uh, what everyone is saying. Um, it's a bit of a bummer that's not up right now, to be totally honest with you. It's kind of a thing, but it's okay. We will figure it out. And if not, we will consume coffee until we figure it out. Um, 
soldier one. Okay, here we go. Um, this guy here, like this. I was just trying to check the part to make sure I'm placing it in the right spot. Um, yeah. It's four tabs. Why am I having a hard time with this? Oh, it's because I'm not going up far enough? That's why. Again, I've built this model before. You would think that I would have this down, right? No. Something really neat. I'll like share this with you guys too. Um, so the Moyo store, those guys are those guys are awesome. Just for the record, um, those guys are really fun to play with. Uh, really fun to talk to. Um, so what they do is they they actually build um, all of those models that you see. Uh, that's what they've told me at least. They they have the uh, creator who sits there and he creates all of those statues that you see made out of bolts. And um, I've seen some other ones online from other companies as well. But honestly, the guys at the Moyo store, like they're the, the guy who makes those or the lady that makes those, um, super talented. Like super 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 talented. And uh, they've asked for my feedback on those as well. Um, you know, like what, what things work, what things don't work. And, um, I really like companies that are, that are that involved with their, with their people. Um, so I'm giving them a little bit of a shout out here, uh, just because like they are a really cool brand. And I do realize that they tend to be a little bit more on the expensive side and they're not your traditional metal models like we're doing right now. But guys, I'm telling you the Moyo store, they have some really neat stuff on there and they have a T-Rex that they recently did. It looks so cool. Uh, they also have some other ones like these really neat LED lights and stuff that they've been doing. And uh, they've really been, in my opinion, like they are upping their game, upping their game hardcore. And uh, I actually just got a package from them um, two days ago and it's a chameleon. <laughs> it's a chameleon. And uh, I'm super excited to build it. It's a smaller one. It's not as big as the, uh, it's not as big as the uh, angler fish or the, or the bull. Um, but it's not as small as some of the insects we did there for a bit, but it's neat. It's neat. I'm excited. And uh, I'm going to do a normal video with that one, though, is because those ones tend to be a little bit more boring. I'm um, just like kind of, uh, you know, attaching bolts and stuff. Um, so I'll, I'll do a traditional group builders episode for that where I, you know, hyper cut it. So you're not super bored like you are right now, maybe. Um, there we go. Look at that. Look at that. That is. That looks great. That looks so good. I'm so proud of where we, we, we've been able to accomplish on this uh, live stream. Let's go put this down right here. And uh, I will work on this tail. I am being very mindful of my time as well, though. Um, now, I could use my Bender 1.0 tool for this. This is a very easy thing to do because, again, we, uh, we do have a little piece of metal here that we want to keep straight in the center. And, again, all we're going to do is just kind of go right to that little line there like that. Tighten her down and bend up. That's it. And then the same thing again here. We're going to loosen her up. Flip her over. And then we're going to try to go right to that line. And what I'm doing is I'm actually turning it so that I can see it. You may not be able to see it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tweezers, get under here, and whoops. I actually moved it. There we go. That's why I added this little grippy surface here. With the, uh, I found that when I was trying to bend some of the more smaller pieces like I am right now, that the parts would tend to like slip. So with the intention was to, see it did it again, shoot a monkey. I don't think I have enough uh, downward pressure force. So what I need to do is flip it over this way. And then this, um, because there's more of a top here, that downward pressure will be more, and it's because it's also um, shorter than over here. This piece here will now have a little bit more pushing strength than the other side does. So I'll just level that out. Same thing, match the line. Downward force, go under here and lift, just like that. Boom. And let's go this side here. Yeah. Oop. Oh, oh, did I scratchy? No, I did not scratchy. Came close to scratchy though. Came very close to scratchy, but we're good. Boom. Now we could have achieved the same thing by grabbing our tweezers here 
and just going like a these lining them up like that and then just kind of like pushing it down the thing about that though is that the tweezers have a little bit of a rounded center so if you're not careful you will accidentally round this piece which we're looking for a straight finish so there we go just trying to turn that little piece there over all the way there we go Oh, hey, I don't know how many people are watching right now, but take a look at this. If I ever need to go, you know, if I, let's say there's like a, something going on and I need to go away for a minute, take a look at this. Bam! What? Come on. All uh, right, right? Right? There's even like a little fade, uh, a little fade and everything. Isn't that neat? I don't know. I thought it was cool. It's like the same thing with the starting suit. I can't wait to get more of this stuff going, guys. I think that uh, this will be a fun way to to stream going far to, to build these with you in the future. The whole thing is I'm trying to cut down on, uh, on time. I'm trying to be better about time management and uh, I want to spend more time with my little dudes too. And, uh, I want to make sure that I'm not consuming my life too much with trying to get videos out. And like I said before earlier that like these take a long time to make videos take a long time to make uh, in our, in our industry, in this metal world. So, um, by streaming the whole build, from start to finish. You guys will have the content uh, of me building. Um, so if people want help, they can actually watch these, get the help, see me building it live, see the things that I'm struggling with live, which I think is all important. And then um, I can actually re-upload this and uh, make more of a group builders episode. I actually thought about pre-recording some stuff like uh, GB1 and all that. And um, then that way, what I would do is like I do a combination where it would be like, I would be building live on the show, like I'm doing right now. And then um, I would have some pre-recorded stuff. So like for instance, when I open the package, typically on the show, I do that like um, for you, you see me do that, right? You didn't see that today. Well, if I can pre-record me opening a package and uh, all that stuff, then I'll just play the, that little cut scene for you in the live stream. And I think that'd be fun. So you get like, you'll get the tool time, you'll get all that stuff um, just a little bit differently. I also want to encourage more engagement. I want to, I want to chat with you guys. I want to, I want to have more fun with you, see what you're up to, see what you're struggling with, see what you guys are kicking your kicking butt with. Make sure there we go. Got that in there. Finally. It's kind of fun on a weekly basis. I get about, uh, I usually get about 20 questions about how to build these models. It's a lot of fun. The Notre Dame model is very nice. You forgive me. I'm, I'm, uh, I do take a look at the chat. It's just where I have my computer right now, I have to kind of do a 180 every single time I take a look at it, which is not a good position. Again, we're all learning today. Um, the Notre Dame model, yeah, very cool. Uh, there's a model out there, and I think it's... I don't think it's Metal Earth, and I'm, I'm probably going to eat my shoe here in a minute when I say that, but... Um, there's a model out there that is very similar to the Vatican model. Um, and I'm going to get this wrong. And I'm so sorry for people out there that might be of the religion. I believe it's an Islamic temple. And uh, it's blue and white. And um, it's very shiny, very cool. Lots of domes. Lots of domes. And I'm actually wanting to build it. Uh, the reason why I'm wanting to build it is because it's a very popular model out there for people to take a look at and build. Um, and, and trying to get it all done, I think it'll be kind of fun. Anyway, um, let me go ahead and put this on here. I think it would be a challenge for me to get that built correctly. And... Also though, if I look back and I see that you guys can see each other uh, chatting like on the side of the screen, that I might replace that little box there that you see that's kind of blank right now. I might replace that with something else. There we go. Okay, I don't like this. 
I have a little bit of a gap here in the center. I'm not really digging it. I don't want to push too much on it though. A live build along. Yep, exactly. A live little build along. Uh, and, and you guys get to see my little craziness as we go along. Uh, you know, a little bit more authentic, I think, too. I think uh, I think that's important. I don't want people to think that uh, I'm just chilling all the time. I, 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 you know what? I was really offended by comments the last couple of days. I ain't to chill. <laughs> I was offended. Not offended, but just uh, surprised, man. So surprised. Really surprised. Okay. Cool. Um, now, I know I said that I pretty much got to wrap it up here. I got about nine minutes before I do that. Um, what I'm going to go ahead and do, though, is try to work on these wings. Now, these wings typically are some of the most complicated things that we are going to uh, attempt to build when it comes to the... Uh, the um what's it called the uh, shuttle launch the shuttle models the reason for that is because we have to bend just the edge here we're just going to be more just like forming the edge along here we're going to be like a uh, using this little rounding tool and that's because if you look at the model it actually has that little rounded edge like this and it can be kind of hard to get if you use your tweezers and you just go around and and bend it down you're going to run the risk of having these like little ripples throughout the entire piece so i try to avoid that now, when I do this, it's going to warp the piece. It's going to look crazy. But what we can do afterwards is straighten everything out. And it should leave a really nice shaping here. Um, it should leave a nice shaping. Should. Um, if it doesn't, it's my model and uh, not yours. So we learn together. <laughs> Let's just do this here. So again, just like a pencil. Um, just like a pencil here. I'm going to do these. Okay, now you can see how I'm getting this right here, right? You see how I'm getting that border? And I'm kind of like rolling it. Now, you know, actually, uh, it's not just this piece. Um, you can see how it's leaving a little bit of a residue, and that's because this is a, a nylon, right? So what we can do is go a little further. A lot of you guys don't know, but I have a little 3D printed drawer like right underneath my uh, desk here. I pull that in and out all the time. Uh, it's a little bit of an annoying sound, but man, that's like one of the best things I've 3D printed since I've had my printers. So um, these are cake decorating tools. They're fondant tools. They're pretty cheap. You can find them on uh, AliExpress pretty cheap. Um, Amazon sells them too, but you're going to pay a premium, just FYI. Uh, these little balls here, though, are what we're going to use. They're made out of metal, and uh, we're just going to press it. Now, because these are made out of metal, they tend to be a lot more gnarly in terms of the shaping of things. So keep that in mind. Like you can actually get a really, uh, you can get a ripple effect if you're not careful. I'm going to use a bigger tool right now, and I'm going to just do the same thing. Again, I know this is slower, but it's worth it. Okay. So you can see how I got that, right? You see how we got that little bit of that 3D look? That's that's kind of what we're aiming for. Um, now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna define it a little bit more. And I know I said that you, you wanna avoid using your tweezers, and I mean it, but because we already have this done, it should, yeah, there we go. It should work really well. Now, again, I do expect us to have to like kind of work things out a little bit more here. Um, I do expect that, but this will be a nice little shape. I might have done a little bit too much on the side there, but again, I'll show you how I can do this. Taking my tweezers and just kind of flattening out like that. I can actually even take my Bender 1.0 tool and uh, do one of these. So I'll take like this. Oops, silly me. Oops, there we go. Flip this guy around. Okay. Like that. And then we're gonna just tighten her down 
I'm gonna press on her a little bit and just kind of flatten that like that. Cool. All right, there is our formed wing. And that looks really good in my opinion, I think. I think that looks really good. A little bit of a harsh bend here still, but overall not bad. Okay, let's take these guys here. And um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna bend these guys down 90 degrees. Just like that. Okay, good question. Sorry about the delay there again. Um, so when it comes to forming pieces like you just saw, um, like you said Deadpool's face, for instance, like that's a great question. Um, so with those pieces, you wanna have a soft surface. This is actually why I have this mouse pad here is because it allows me to be able to like um, get a nice little, it has some give, right? Like when I press a tool in here, it has a really nice give into it, which allows me to get a nice like rounded shape. Um, I, I, you know what, real quickly, I'll show you what I mean. So a hard surface, let's use my Bender 1.0 tool again here. So if I take this hard surface here and I try to like, you know, bend apart, look. See how it's not, like, even with me pressing hard, it's not, it's working eventually. You do see how it's raising there. Um, like it, it, I mean, it will go not very well as opposed to this. When I place it down on a, on a table like this, and I do, I'm gonna use a bigger ball here because I don't wanna screw this up, but like watch, if I just now go like this, you'll see the part like actually curve, right? And that's pretty much how you make a perfect dome, just like that. Like, uh, and, and this is the, or a perfect cone, sorry, perfect cone. Um, so as you just saw, there's a very effective way of doing things. And it's all about having a little mouse pad, a little bit of a pushy surface. With Deadpool's face, I would actually use um, something like this because see how much like smaller that ball is that would allow me to get in there with the detail and like really kind of you know get those really nice contours um, that would be my suggestion on how to attempt Deadpool if you wanted to get really into the weeds with that one um, yeah same thing these little cake decorating tools are kind of cool eh um, alrighty let me attach this wing here, my friends. And then I'm going to call it for a little bit. Um, I will come back on later tonight. Um, I don't wanna say it an exact time because I just, it's all about the little dudes. It's all about getting them into their beds. I think I'll record after they go to bed. And uh, that way I'm not taking away time from them. And uh, gotta give some love to the girlfriend too. We've been playing a lot of Minecraft lately together, rocking this really awesome world. And uh, we're calling it Pandaland. And uh, we've got iron farms going. We got the fish farms going. We've got trading posts. We found the, uh, we finally found the, uh, what's it called? The oh, Nether Fortress. So we've been trying to, I've been trying to get some of the skeleton skulls. And if you know anything about that, that's a lot of, uh, or sorry, a lot of the wither skulls. And if you know anything about that, like it's, it's, it's just basically a bunch of mining, but uh, my girlfriend before meeting me wasn't really into the video games so it's been a lot of fun to introduce her into some of this stuff and again to for me to get her into minecraft that's a win <laughs> i've been playing minecraft from the very beginning and it's a game that you come back to multiple times throughout your life and it's like there's a meme out there where it's like you know minecraft uh like 10 years ago this game's pretty good minecraft you know now ah this game's pretty good same situation and, uh, but now though, I've kind of ruined her in a lot of ways because she went from playing Minecraft to like, now she's rocking, uh, what's it called? Animal Crossing? Whew. You want to talk about crack? <laughs> like turnips, like the selling turnips on the Saturday and Sunday. I think that's, that's some funny stuff. Okay, there we go. So as you guys can see, we've actually added that little wing on there and I put that little Endeavor uh, sticker. Now, do you see what I mean about adding that little bit of detail? It really does kind of make the ship pop out a little bit. And when we add that lower piece on there, if we round it out the same way, it will have a really nice connection. Okay, 
So this is where I'm going to have to uh, stop for now. And uh, I really appreciate everyone popping in for the live stream, coming in and hanging out with me for a few hours. Um, I know that uh, putting this together is a little bit of a chore. I will stop. I will not do any more until a little bit later on tonight with you. My plan is to stream the entire build from start to finish. I don't expect you guys to hang out with me the entire time, but if you're building a model, if you're attempting to build a model today, and you want to join me on a little bit later on tonight, if you run into issues or questions or have any concerns regarding the things we're doing, just let me know. Send me a message. Type in the chat box there, and I'll be more than glad to uh, to do this and try to assist you with it. Okay, everybody, enjoy the rest of your evening. And until next time, keep building. <laughs>